What's up, y'all? We are back. Episode 14 of the Colorado Rockies Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough. We are here in 2028, June 1st, and the Rockies sit at 30 and 28. Um, it's been an interesting start to the year. Uh, some pitchers that I didn't think were going to come through are playing well. The offense has been incredible, um, despite not hitting home runs, which is, you know, really interesting. But, um, you know, we've had some guys implode and get, get demoted. Um, but, you know, we're in last place right now in this insanely tough division. You know, uh, we're, we're the fourth wild card right now. So uh, three games behind, I guess that's Atlanta. Um, yeah, tough math there. But um, we're three games behind Atlanta. So, you know, every team from our division could be in the playoffs, which would be insane. Um, obviously the first time that would ever happen due to, uh, you know, the realignment and how everything went, um, a couple of seasons ago. Um, but, you know, overall, uh, I, I'm happy with where we are at this point and, uh, you know, let's hop into, you know, we're, we're only in June, so it's not a big deal yet. So we'll, we'll kind of cruise through this, but we'll go through some of the biggest standout guys. So Zach Veen, uh, has been insane despite only hitting eight home runs, has a, uh, 177 WRC plus. Uh, looks like he's returning to form from that 26, 2026 season. Uh, I don't think he'll ever hit 99 extra base hits again. That was insane. Or, uh, I mean, maybe he could sustain the, the 440 Woba, but um, absolutely incredible season. You know, his BABIP is uh, 440 at the moment. So, you know, but it was 417 that year, and, you know, he averages 400 for his career. So, uh He's been insane. Love uh, love having him in the lineup every day. Uh, Churio's been awesome. A 123, OP, uh, 135 WRC+. And uh, moved him to right, and he's been good in right field as well um, after playing left field for the last couple of years. Miguel Blyce, uh, he had an insane start to the year. Can we check, like, his... Um... Yeah, so, like, March and April, he was, uh, he was on pace for, like, 12 war at one point. Uh, has cooled off a bit in in, uh, in May, but still having a really good season. Um, you know, finally breaking out after showing promise last year, but, you know, he's finally coming through. Uh, Jose Ramirez has been a big, uh, big accusation in the offseason. Um, 121 WRC+. Plus. Uh, I think he's playing a good, he's playing a fine third base, whatever. Uh, he's here for his bat, and, you know, he's been leading off and, you um, doing well there. Dansby Swanson has been, uh, he's been up and down, but you know, the good defense, his ratings have dropped a little bit, but you know, 5.6 zone rating, he's on pace for, would that be 15, 16 or so? Um, honestly, the entire lineup has played well. Drew Romo's bounced back after the rough season last year. Um, you know, the bench player has been a little rough. Guerrero's been, he's been fine, I guess, in this like weird infielder that shouldn't be an infielder role. Um, but, you know, the offense overall has been incredible. Uh, Adele Amador, in his first taste of starting actions, but about a league average hitter. So uh, we're totally cool with that. His range did drop, so he's no longer like a shortstop option long term. Um, on the pitching side, it's been a it's been a bit of a different story. So uh, Raider Rodriguez out of the back end uh, continues to pitch insanely well. Uh, had a really good year last year. Has been better this year. Um, Justin Steele somehow has is our leading uh, starter in war. Uh, you know, his FIP is much better than his ERA, but, uh, you know, well, he's been better recently. His last couple starts, you know, he had this one bad game. Besides that, he's been good recently. Got off to a miserable, miserable start. Um, let me see. Oh, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that was someone else. Um, it's been a couple days since I uh, picked this up. Maybe it was Senga? Look at Sierra, God. Uh, yeah, he had a horrible April. Um, and he's been bad. He's 0-7 at this point. Uh, maybe maybe I was looking at the wrong stats there. Hold on, let me look. Yeah, okay, yeah. Steele had a 7-7-1 ERA in April. Yeah, he got off to a miserable start. Um, so hopefully he can bounce back. You know, we need him to, to play better than he has. Uh, Tanner Witt's been better than that ERA indicates, I think. Um he, he was really good in April, rough May, 
But overall, he's he's been fine. Dan Reinwald's been our clear best pitcher this season, uh, despite like some shaky peripherals to say the least. Um, maybe not living up to the number four pick at this point, but he's still got time. He's only twenty five. Um, you know, if that changeup develops and you know this stuff ticks up a little bit and the control gets a little better, I think he could be a good player. And then uh, Tyler Owens has been in the pen and starting a little bit, and he's been okay. So uh, Kevin Garcia, who was our like third or fourth starter to begin the year, was absolutely unpitchable. Uh, in April, he had a 7-1 ERA, um, you know, four Ks per nine, five walks per nine. He was unpitchable. So I ripped him out of the starting rotation, put him in the bullpen. He's been much better there. Um so, you know, he'll probably stick there for the rest of the year, I'd imagine. Max Meyer has been a little disappointing. Uh, you know, his ratings are good, but, um, you know, he's probably going to be due for a decent raise this offseason. We'll see what we do with him. Uh, Ross has been shaky, but, the you know, the, the FIP and the Sierra look a lot better than the ERA at this point. Um, Cleveland's been good. Oliveira's has been good. You know, Chevilly and, and um, Rodriguez have been good. Alex Lang has been miserable. <laughs> He, he got off, yeah, his first appearance of the year was horrible. April was, like, somehow just as bad as that first appearance. And, uh, you know, May, he's turned it around a bit. I still have hope for him, but uh, free agent for the year. We'll see what we do with him uh, long term. But um, June 1st, just wanted to check in and, uh, you know, give a little bit of a breakdown. Um, Alex Philpot, who... Pitched well in high, or didn't pitch well in high A, but, you know, his he still has good ratings and stuff. Uh, extreme fly ball. We'll see we'll see if he could pitch well, but he got hurt for four weeks. Uh, was pitching well in double A. Could see his way up to triple A if he pitches well for the rest of the year. Um, as for other prospects, uh, Sassane hasn't appeared yet. Neither is Cooper, our uh, 31st overall pick last year. Uh, Chris Wood, who, uh, you know, we, I think we talked about him a little bit in the offseason episode, uh, saw an uptick in a lot of his ratings since we drafted him. And, uh, yeah, he's in high A. Could get a promotion pretty soon up to double A. Uh, George Wolkow, I think we'll say. Wolkow, I think we'll stick with. Uh, hitting really well in double A. I actually might call him the triple A right now. Yeah, I mean, his ratings are there, so I'm going to call him the triple A. Um, you know, he could see he could see some uh, time in the majors if we have some injuries. Uh, Braden Holcomb's been awesome in AAA. Another guy, we'll see. Uh, if we have some injuries, we'll 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 give him a shot. Uh, could even be like a utility guy down the stretch for us, even though his defense isn't really good enough. Um, Ermini Toto, who was our international guy a couple seasons back, I kind of pushed him up to A ball a little earlier than I should have last year. Uh, that might have hurt his development a bit, but, you know, he's bounced back a little bit this year. Um, I don't want to send him down to rookie ball, but, uh, yeah, I probably rushed him a bit. That, that was, uh, you know, a little ambitious on my part. Jackson Cox, who had a really good spring, pitching well in AAA, uh, a guy who, you know, he's one of those next guys up for us. Um, Connor Griffin hitting well in AA, a guy who's probably a midseason call up to AAA at some point. Um, Brent Kreps is another guy to talk about because he's hit really well in AAA. Oh, he's held his own in AAA, um, but he's 24 years old. The ratings are there. Uh, he's our shortstop of the future, most likely. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll sim ahead to, I think it's the, the draft is the next thing up. And um, actually, the All-Star game is on the... Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll sum up to this area, this All-Star break area in about a month and a half, so... Uh, yeah, we'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back. All-Star break, and you can check through the All-Stars here if you're interested. Um, we'll go down to the NL, and no pitchers. Actually, one pitcher, Randy Rodriguez, uh, well-deserving. Um, on pace to throw 88 innings. Uh, has been incredible. The the one bright spot, spot of our pitching staff. Um, but on the offense, Brian Betancourt who we'll go over, but he's been insanely good as our DH. Uh, he makes his first all-star team. Um, Zico Tovar for the Cubs now makes the all-star team. Uh, it might be their, is he like their only representative? Because he's not having a particularly great season. Um, 
you know, about a league average hitter. His range dropped again, so but he's still playing a good second base. So, I mean, he's had a nice year, but like nothing crazy. Um, besides that, no one else in the infield, but our entire outfield, uh, Zach V and Miguel Blyce and Jackson Churio make the team. Uh, Miguel Blyce was hurt for a minute, but. Uh, it was like a week and a half thing. It was like day to day. I just want to get, give some guys a shot and see uh, what we have in our minor league system. So uh, I put him on the IL and called up this guy, Drew Gilbert, who was absolutely destroying uh, AAA pitching. Called him up. He was really good in a little stint, uh, mostly playing right field. Um, but yeah, now we're at the half point, we can kind of, halfway point. We can kind of uh, assess how this team's doing. Miguel Blyce, you know, we mentioned him. He's been our best player. Uh, playing a good center field and, uh, you know, hitting the cover off the ball, uh, despite missing quite a few games. Uh, I, I mean, I was cycling in um, Parker Meadows, who is not pictured, as you can see. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but um, I was cycling in Parker Meadows, and then, you know, he went down for a week and a half. So that's why he's only played 73 games, but, you know, he's our everyday guy for the rest of the year. Uh, Jackson Churio, having a really nice season. Uh, on pace for 5.2 war. Uh, this is just what he does at this point. He's a, uh, you know, he's not gonna walk a ton, but he doesn't trick out, and uh, you know, pretty good power. Uh, he was off to a rough start power wise, but he he had like a, a stretch where like he he was on a power tear. Uh, he was up to like eighteen home runs at one point. Kind of cooled down at this point. Um, but let's see if I could. Yeah. So in June he hit eight home runs, uh, and he has like twelve for the other like three months. So. Um, yeah, really nice season from him. Uh, Zach Bean doing what he does. Uh, not quite the tarried pace he was on to start the year, but, you know, still been really good. Uh, Chris Bryant's picked it up a bit. He, he was like a league average hitter but uh, last check-in, but uh, has gotten WRC plus up to 122 on pace for about four wars. So, you know, this contract worked out really freaking well. I mean, I'm sure the Rockies would, would wish they got, uh, you know, what we got out of him in this series. So average about... Three and a half war, probably, for per season. Uh, I guess we can look right here. Um, he had 21 in, what is this? One, well, I guess you count the season that I wasn't in charge, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons. So, yeah, about three war a year. Uh, you know, I'll take that out of him. Uh, so, the contract worked out fine. Dansby Swanson's picked it up with the bat. Uh, still doing it with the glove. He's been great uh, defensively. Uh, Brian Betancourt, we kind of talked about him briefly, but yeah, 347 average, now my leadoff hitter. Um, unfortunate uh, injury here, Jose Ramirez, about a month ago, I think, um, blew out his knee, uh, his PCL, so he's out for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember what we gave up in that trade. I don't think it was anything like crazy. Uh, where the heck is this man? I really got to look for his name. I guess I can go into his history card. Okay, so I want to give it up Willie Adamez, who is really struggling for them. So, I mean, don't want to see him not do well, but, you know, uh, we'll take that. And then Jaden Hill, so uh, who's been fine, but, you know, uh, a piece that I'm not really concerned giving up. So that didn't really work out, but, you know, he was really good when he was in there. So I uh, can't be too upset. <laughs> and I mentioned Braden Holcomb would come in if there was an injury about two days after I recorded the, or like, Maybe a week later after I said after I said that, uh, Ramirez went down. So, but talking about Holcomb, uh, he came in and gave us a huge spark. Uh, he was off to a tarred start when he first came up. He's cooled down a bit, but you know a one thirty six WRC plus and a hundred plate appearances, uh, and you know his potential ratings have gone up. And yeah, really excited for him and what he's gonna bring. Uh, Drew Romo's kept doing it. You know he was hurt to start the year, but. Uh, he's come back and picked up where he left off. And uh, Adele Amador, about a league average hitter, uh, good defense at second. We'll take that all day. Uh, you don't need everyone to be a star on your team. So, you know, guys like this are very valuable, uh, especially when they're making the league minimum. Uh, pretty decent arbitration estimate next year. So we'll have to make a decision on that. But uh, I didn't mention Palma last episode, but uh, he's literally just a singles hitter. But <laughs> he has six extra base hits on the year, but... When he, uh, when he plays, he's been very good. Like, probably the best backup catcher I've ever had. Um, on this team, at least, in this series. So, uh, really happy with him. 
We mentioned Drew Gilbert. Uh, you know, limited time, but he's been good. Uh, White Langford, not quite as good as he was last year, but, you know, he was never going to be a 152 WRC plus guy. Um, actually, much better against righties and lefties, although I have him exclusively, for the most part, playing against lefties. Um, so, you know, the weak side of the platoon, he's not going to play a ton, but a uh, still valuable player. And then Brent Baucom, who was the second overall pick in 2025. Uh, another one of those weak drafts where I didn't know who to pick. Uh, we gave him the call up when uh, we uh, DFA'd uh, Juan Guerrero because no one wanted to trade for him. And um, I couldn't set him down, obviously. He was out of options. So uh, he went to the minors, though. He passed through waivers. So uh, we called up Baucom. You know, he's like a true infielder, and he's been good. So uh, happy with what we've gotten out of him. And then uh, the pitching staff, you know, it's getting better. But, <laughs> you know, we don't have, like, that ace like Senga's been. Uh, he's been much better. You know, he got off to a horrible start. He <laughs> didn't win a game for a very long time. Now he's 3-8. and eight, But, uh, you know, he's gotten better. You know, we'll, we'll hope for better things. And then Reinwald kind of fallen off a bit. Uh, you know, he's probably still been our second best pitcher this year. Uh, Justin Steele is getting better as well, but it's still not great. And then Tanner Witt, same story, like just a fine pitcher, uh, you know, about a league average. So, um, you know, we should basically have like four league average starters right here. And then we just called up Jackson Cox. Uh, he was good in AAA, and I want to give him a shot. So we'll see what we have there. And then uh, bullpen, Kevin Garcia has been much better. Uh, we s traded for Sam Henches, who uh, – also traded for in our twin series, maybe around this time, actually, in the save. But uh, Max Meyer was just not cutting it out of the pen. So I uh, I traded him for uh, a half a season of Sam Henschen. So um, we'll see how that works out. He hasn't been really good, but, you know, only 9.2 innings, like nothing crazy yet. Uh, Scott Efros has definitely turned around after a rocky start. Uh, <laughs> the walks, the case per walks are, uh, are, are pretty impressive, so... Uh, we like what we have there. And then Oliveira is, uh, despite having the 35 control, he has not had a problem really with walks. You're like, I'll take under four walks per nine with that strikeout rate. Um, so, you know, I don't know what's going on with the control. Uh, and he doesn't give up a ton of home runs either, despite being a fly ball pitcher. So, um, you know, I'm sure to keep rolling with it until uh, until it doesn't work. So, uh, Chevilli, Rodriguez made the all-star team. chevilli has been good. And then uh, Lang's been better. Um, he's my closer because, you know, he, he's a free agent after the year, so I don't have to worry about arbitration uh, stuff going on. Um, Wolklau, uh, right after the video, I think when J-Rom got hurt, I called up, um, what the hell's his name? Uh, Holcomb. <laughs> and then I called up Wolklau up to AAA, so, uh, and he's been really good up there. So, you know, maybe a September call-up guy. Um... Then Krebs has continued to hit well in AAA. We had Victor uh, Juarez up for two starts, I think. And uh, he wasn't really good. So, <laughs> sent him back down. Gave up a lot of home runs. Uh, we DFA'd Tyler Owens. Uh, he, he just can't cut it as a starter at this point. He, he had this really bad game against Cincinnati. And I was just, I was just done with it. So, um, And then other guys who have made appearances... Uh, called up Jose Fleury, who I think he was a starter at one point, has lost all of his stamina, so he's a reliever. Uh, that really sucks. Um, Connor Brandon's still in AAA, but he hasn't been very good. Uh, Tom Cosgrove hasn't made it up to the majors yet. You know, we just haven't had a ton of injuries in the pitching staff. Um, then, like, you know, oh, Parker Meadows. Uh, yeah, he was not hitting well. Um, and I wanted to give some other guys a shot. So, um, yeah, he wants to be in the majors, but, you know, it, he's the next guy up with an injury. So uh, he can chill down there for a little bit. All right, we head to the first-year player draft here. And, you know, Tim Albert looks like the, you know, 40 overall already. This dude could play in the majors this moment. Yeah, Penn Daly, yeah. I wish I had the first overall pick one of these years. What the hell? So, whatever. Uh before I get really pissed off, uh, let's go to our pick. Uh, oh, my goodness. Um, already eyeing down Jim Davis. You know, the arm's not great, but I would play him at shortstop. Uh, the arm is important at shortstop, but 
with that range and turn double play and that bat, uh, I would have no problem with him over there. You know, a great second baseman, though, of course. Um, Amari Bloodsaw. Oh, my goodness. Another really nice pitcher. Well-developed. Uh, you know, a high uh, bonus demand, but uh, a guy will definitely consider. You know, high school players, not really too fond of them. I, I, I don't have good luck with them, as I've mentioned many times in the save and, uh, you know, in all of these saves. Uh, I'd much prefer a college guy at this point. Um, yeah, like, the, just a little tangent here. Um, our, I mean, the last guy we took is a high school guy, um, Connor Griffin. I mean, he's finally made his way here, but he was a 2024 pick. He's 2028. He's in double A. Um, so, and he's, like, not killing it. So, you know, it's just like, I don't want to wait for these guys forever to get to the majors, and then they, they bust out. And, um, and, and yeah, so uh, Chris Johnson. Man. So a uh, ton of good players here, uh, despite not having a really nice pick. Uh, we have the 23rd pick in the draft. I don't think I said that when we first jumped in, but I did not. Case in Cunningham uh, could literally jump into shortstop right now for me. I like this quite a bit. Um, our scout likes some defensive whiz. Control of strike zone. I mean, what do we have? Okay, uh, really quick. You know, this is a little behind the scenes. This is what I would do if I wasn't recording this. Uh, what is our, our our depth in the minor leagues? You know, Sasena, more of a second baseman if he ever makes it up. Uh, you know, a 19-year-old in rookie ball. Who knows? Not going to bet on that. But Kreps, uh, second baseman, maybe shortstop. Probably, I'd probably play him at short. Um, we don't really have any outfield prospects. I mean, Toto's a long way away if he makes it. Uh, we have Connor Griffin, more of a corner guy, though. Uh, we have a ton of pitchers, quite frankly. Uh, Philpot, Cooper, Wood. Like, those are all really nice prospects. This guy, Ford Thompson, uh... This is why I always do every pick in these drafts, because 2024, 20th round pick, uh, you know, one of the last picks in this draft. Um, I don't even remember why I drafted him. I don't remember. Uh, draft time was around, like, here. He was a 35 potential. I think he had, uh, like, some decent potential ratings. Um, I like throwing darts at these high school guys for a reason. And, uh, and yeah, he is, his velocity is ticked up from 85 or no, he was over here. So, um, 86 to 88, he's ticked up to 91 to 93, uh, has gained a bunch of stuff as a result. And, uh, yeah, look at this, like this is insane. So, uh, I'm not going to say like, I, I plan for him to be this pitcher, but <laughs> like, uh, this is why, you know, you look at all these picks and you, you, you play it out. So, excited about him. He's the 84 prospect in baseball. Um, you know, we have some, like, lower guys, like Jackson Cox, Jordy Var Var Vargas, and uh, Phil Cates a long way away. But uh, I think our pitching depth is pretty good in the minors. And I haven't really had good luck with these guys in the save quite yet. Um, so, Jim Davis, you know, there's obvious upside here for, like, a, a really nice... Really nice second base slash shortstop prospect. Uh, could probably be in the majors in the next year and a half. However, is the upside there enough to, to you know, to make that pick? Uh, can he play any outfield? That's a uh, that could change things. Uh, not really. Uh, Amari Bloodsaw, I really like this pitcher a ton. Um, you know, the high demand scares me, but. A great pitch mix. Fastball, slider, sinker, splitter, cutter, knuckle curve. Uh, pitches that move all over. He doesn't have a changeup, which, you know, I like to have a changeup in there. But uh, just to have something that moves toward right-handed batters. Um, so toward his arm side. But, you know, the splitter and uh, the splitter and sinker do that enough, I think. Um, you know, I don't know how much that stuff matters in this game, uh, pitch mix, but... I do like to keep it uh, and take that into account. Um, so, Mark Bloodsaw, definitely a guy I'm considering, as well as Jim Davis. 
Davis Lee Grout, not I mean, I don't really want a third base only guy. Uh, figure, you know, corner, low work ethic, low leader. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily discount that automatically, but in a draft like this where there's other guys I like better, you know, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a deal breaker for me. So, uh, case in Cunningham, uh, I'm really intrigued by this guy. Um, eventually be above average contact hitter in the big leagues, talented flourishes for its, uh, you know, he's a little small, 5'9", 170. Um, but he has good speed. He could probably stick it short due to that speed and the range. Um, the arm's not great, but good enough. You know, see, if, if it was the OSA ratings, I'd take him. But, you know, our, our scout doesn't like him as much. He thinks he's better, or just as well developed, but the ceiling isn't as high. You know, you got Jim Davis, who isn't quite the defender, but, you know, much bigger upside, uh, you know, a little bit bigger as a, from a stature standpoint, um, and weight wise. And, um, what, what have we done our last couple drafts? So back in, let's see. So we went pitcher, hitter, hitter, pitcher, pitcher. So we've kind of loaded up on pitcher, um, you know, but I really, ugh, I really like Bloodsaw. And it's a sick name, too. I mean, Bloodsaw, like, come on. Um, you know, he's a pitcher that could pitch in our park, too. There's good upside. You know, we only have $10 million to spend. Okay, yeah, I got to keep keep that in mind, that, that we don't have a ton of money this year for to spend on draft picks, so... Uh, Jim Davis, a lefty. Do we have... We do have a comp pick. I forgot about that. Uh, draft order. So... No, we don't. What the... Oh. Okay. Well, Ryan McMahon definitely signed with someone. We did, should definitely have a pick. Maybe it's not a first rounder. Oh, it's at the end of the second round. Okay. Um, so, there's no uh, first round comp pick. That's unfortunate. You know, maybe I should look through some of these uh, high school guys really quick. Um, you know, Tim Lind. <laughs> His hobby is upside, but... Bobby uh, Peter, nah. Yeah, none of these guys really catch my eye. That does, but... Uh, I think I'm going to go with Jim Davis here. Um, shit. Ugh. Okay, it's between Davis and... I'm sorry this is taking so long. I should probably just cut this, but... Uh, <laughs> Or Cunningham. All right, it's Jim Davis, normal hitter. Doesn't have the wheels that Cunningham does. You know, is the bat really that much better? Like, the gap power, okay, yeah, it's a 75, but, like, who cares? Um, so take that out. I mean, he's, he's plus average, plus, plus, plus in those, and, I mean, maybe I should go to the comparison tool. Uh, so, we have Jim Davis here, and, okay, so, I mean, current, yeah, uh, obviously Cunningham is a better player, potential-wise, I mean, take out that gap power, they're practically the same player, minus the home runs, but, uh, you know, the defense is better for, for uh, Cunningham. I think the pick here is Cunningham. Um, I didn't think it was going to be, but, um, you know, the, the ceiling isn't as high, but he plays a more valuable position. Um, you know, I'm a little worried about this power and how, like, effective he's going to be in the long term. Like, you know, there's higher upside, but, you know, I, I think we need a shortstop, and he's way under slot, so we can, you know, we can afford to splurge a little bit on some other guys. So, yeah, I like this pick. Um, let's look at Jim. Uh, yeah, the arm's not really there. Um, he's a lefty, which I like. Because, you know, we're not exactly lefty-heavy at the moment. Um, 
I hate this so much. <laughs> I wish there was just an obvious pick. Uh, maybe it is Jim Davis, or maybe it's Cunningham. Uh, I'm going to go with Casey Cunningham. Let's do it. All right, so after that longest pick ever, I'm going to sim the rest of this draft and come back afterwards because that, that took way too long. I apologize. All right, so super happy about how this draft wound up going. So we took Casey Cunningham in the first round. Really excited about him. Uh, you know, he'll probably start in double A, <laughs> but could be in the majors like in a month. So we'll, we'll see with him. But, uh, second pick Masato kill chill cut, um, out of Pepperdine university, a uh, really good catcher ability and arm. So a good defensive catcher and, uh, a really solid bat and the OSA thinks he can be a fantastic hitter. So, uh, you know, a really high floor and like pretty decent ceiling for, uh, second round pick so pumped about that one and then third round we uh we decided to roll a dice with a high school pitcher actually this was a basically a free pick so we got this from mcmahon so this is right at the end of the second round um and you know a lot of a lot of bust potential here but you know the the pitch mix is really interesting with the the fastball curveball forkball sinker potentially change up but i doubt it uh but you know the the control of movement are unplayable at the moment but uh, there's a lot of, it's, it's really exciting pitcher. So, um, we'll see with him, but, uh, third round, we took this guy, Edgar Al Apollinar, uh, corner outfielder, DH first base type. Um, you know, really young, but good upside and he was over slot, but we didn't spend a ton on our first couple picks. So we were able to get him including as well as, uh, J.R. Uch, Utek, Utek. Um, out of the University of Louisville, really nice upside here, but you know, he's young and like I'll say with every high school player, there's a ton of bust potential. Uh, Bo Swan, another guy, that really nice pitcher actually. Um, fastball, slider, screwball, changeup, disgusting. Uh, that's like an ideal pitch mix, so uh, throw a dart at him in the fifth round and Steve Foshi, third base, second base, corner outfield guy. Um, actually quite a good corner outfielder. Uh, another nice guy, uh, high schooler. Zion Burdine, uh, really nice pitch mix here. Um, but, you know, I'll say it again. Ton of bust potential. Um, and, you know, we took a couple other guys. Uh, Josh Otternyth, uh, really good defender. Uh, could be a decent bat. It, we'll see. Maybe minor league depth. But, um, yeah, you know, we rounded out with the, you know, the usual throw some darts at high school pitchers, get some... Uh, high upside guys um, relative to where they're drafted. So there we go. We will probably sim up close to the deadline and come right back. All right. So this is probably the first move of a couple that I'm going to make here. So um, this was to get rid of a lot of our high minors depth uh, that we kind of accumulated over the years. So uh, I guess the headliner of this trade is Esnier Gomez, uh, who I like quite a bit as a player, but um, he's blocked by so many different guys in the middle infield. Uh, he doesn't particularly play position well. Uh, he could play around the infield and he could play the outfield corners, but uh, he's 25 and I'd like to give him a chance somewhere else. So uh, hopefully he has a shot in Toronto. I don't know who they have you know, on their roster right now, but uh, I assume he'll get, a, he'll get a chance to play in the majors right now. So uh, also Tom Cosgrove, who we signed in the offseason, uh, just probably isn't going to make the squad at any point. Uh, and he makes a million dollars, so... I'm going to deal him away along with Joshua Mears, who was kind of high minors depth as well that we signed and uh, haven't needed. So um, Mason Neville, uh, a guy that I really like uh, quite a bit, but I just don't, I don't think he's ever going to be better than the guys that kind of are ahead of him in the pecking order. Um, namely like, uh, you know, pretty much any of these guys up here, including like Guerrero Meadows. Like I just don't see him. Uh, crack in the squad. He's already 24, uh, former eighth round pick. I mean, he'll probably be a good player somewhere, but you know, I just want to clear up some spots uh, to give some guys an opportunity on this on our upper minors. So, uh, Derek Mitchell is another guy I'm throwing in. You know, uh, his prospect luster is kind of uh, you know faded, but um, he has a chance to be a good player someday. Uh, maybe he'll be the guy like he was in the twin save, but, uh, not really the upside that he had in that save, but, 
Uh, we're getting AJ Minter. They're eating the rest of his contract. Uh, it wasn't much. It was like 10% of that. Um, but a really good lefty. Uh, we're getting J.D. Hawley, who's a low minors, uh, lower minors, I should say. Uh, second base prospect. A little bit better range. Um, let's see. Could be a leadoff hitter. Yeah, I like that. Um, and Joe Wallace, who's a, you know, a dart throw, former sixth round pick. Uh, you know, not the highest of expectations for him, but I like uh, I like having these low minors depth with the pitching. So uh, we're going to do this trade, and that'll be like our first move of the deadline. Not a big one by any means, but we do get A.J. Minter, which, uh, you know, I kind of like underestimated when I was just going through that trade there. But um, So that leaves us at the point here where we kind of have an extra guy uh, in our pen. Not... Uh, the guys that I want to send down don't really have options. Uh, that being like Oliveira's henches might. Uh, no, he doesn't. So, um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here to clear up that spot. It could be a Kevin Garcia trade. Uh, we could just send out Jackson Cox. Um, and, you know, put Garcia back in the rotation. I don't love that idea, but, you know, Garcia was good last year. So, maybe I give him another shot. Uh, I think we're going to do that. I'm going to give Cox one start, though, and see how he does. Um, and yeah, we're going to head a bit and come back with, uh, you know, our next trade. So I kind of looked over the trading block and there wasn't a ton that I liked out there. Um, I mean, our needs really would be like a third baseman. Holcomb's kind of cooled off. Um, but I mean, he's still been fine. Like this isn't an unplayable player by any means. Um, then we also have Bauckham right behind him who I want to get some more playing time to, and then. You know, right down below, we have George Walklow, who's knocking on the door. Uh, he's probably a September guy, uh, honestly. He might be our starting third baseman down the stretch. Uh, not to count Ben Kreps, who's also a guy who can play some infield. Uh, Daniel Covett, who is a former third-round pick, who I thought really highly of, uh, and has finally made his way up to AAA. So, you know, I think we have a ton of options in the infield, and that's not to mention Cody Schreier either, who uh, probably should be up. But, um, you know, maybe Bauckham will go down for a little bit and Schreier will come back up. We'll just run some guys out there. But, um, you know, the pitching, honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I think Sengo will come around. Um, Garcia probably won't be in there much longer. But, uh, like, Ryan Wald, Steele, Witt, we're going to roll with those guys. And then down in the minor, Chris Wood just got called up to AAA. Uh, I definitely see myself almost certainly calling him up uh, before the end of August uh, to make some, you know, Pitch for us on the stretch. We have Victor Juarez, who hasn't pitched much in the majors. Jackson Cox is really good in his one start uh, before I sent them back down. But uh, that that being said, I think we're like – and Zach Wattis, I want to get up as well. He'll probably be my first baseman next year. But, um, you know, I think we have a ton of guys who we can kind of roll with here. Alex Philpot can pitch out of the pen if we want him to. Um, probably call him with the AAA right now, actually, while I'm here. And, uh, yeah, so I think we're going to have the episode here. We're 59 and 48, four and a half games out in division. Uh, we're, I guess, two and a half, or why is two and a half up on San Diego for the final wild card. And yeah, I think, I think we're in good shape. So, you know, uh, we'll probably pick up in a September episode and finish out the year like that. So thank you very much for watching episode 14, I believe, of the Out of the Park Baseball series, and we will see you next time in September. See you.